Well, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this discussion about 5G. We're going to be talking about 5G, the role that MediaTek is playing, the role that Vodacom is playing. And uh, we are joined by Rami Osman, who's the Director for Corporate Sales and Marketing at MediaTek Middle East and Africa. Davide Tacino, who's the Vodacom Terminals Managing Executive. And 5G is a fascinating technology. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, 5G is the fifth generation wireless technology and it, it basically can provide higher speeds, lower latency, greater capacity than the 4G networks we are using or most of us are using right now and uh, the technical side of it and it's got greater capacity than 4G LTE networks. Now we're going to be talking about the benefits of 5G connectivity, uh, MediaTek's 5G products and what they are doing and their plans to bring 5G to every business and consumer through mobile, through home, through automotive. And remember, you know, 5G is not just about your mobile phone, right? It's used in factories because of the latency. It's used in the internet of things that we talk about. When you talk about auto autonomous driving, 5G is going to be the most critical component of making sure that vehicles are able to drive. Um, and, and that's because of those latency speeds and the high speeds that the information is able to bounce off. Now, it's interesting, this uh, report by the Mobile Economy says that in sub-Saharan Africa, 5G connections will reach 3% of the total across sub-Saharan Africa. This is by 2025. Now that translates to nearly 30 million mobile 5G connections. Now, when you look at the global picture by 2025, 5G connections will make up 20% of the total number of mobile connections with an estimated 1.7 billion connections. This is according to this mobile report. Now, to give you a little bit of context about how fast this con this technology is, because it's mind-blowing. I remember being at Vodacom World, watching the first test of 5G in South Africa. And to give you an idea, it takes 22 minutes to download a high-definition movie on a 4G network right now. It'll take you 32 seconds to do the same on a 5G network. Davide, good morning to you. I mean, Vodacom certainly being the five pioneers in 5G, and you guys are rolling out a lot of 5G at the moment, and the impact is going to be massive on consumers and businesses in South Africa. Yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Rami. And first of all, uh, Thank you very much for the opportunity to share uh, our view, ideas and plans uh, on, on 5G. Uh, you're right, we started, uh, Vodacom was the first network to launch uh, 5G mobile connectivity in South Africa in 2020, and uh, the first to launch 5G on the continent in Lesotho in 2018. We have other markets with, with 5G, um, as an example, Kenya with, uh, with Safaricom. Um, if you look at our numbers in South Africa, uh, Vodacom already has more than half a million customers using 5G device and network. So the growth trend is clearly there. If you compare this number with your 3% to be achieved in 2025, we are already at 1.5%. So we see a big trend in terms of 5G adoptions. As you said, uh, there is a gap between Africa and, and Europe, 3% against 20% in a few years' time. We are trying to address uh, working on spectrum, on frequencies, and working on device affordability. Fantastic. Now, Rami, I want you to tell us about MediaTek because you know what? People, people have a phone in their hands, they're using a technology, but what's inside is what's making the 5G happen. I mean, tell us about, uh, about MediaTek firstly and, and uh, the MediaTek 5G products that you are bringing to South Africa. So firstly, it's a great pleasure to talk to you, Aki and uh, very happy to always catch up with David Day and uh, hope that all our listeners in South Africa are keeping uh, well and safe in these days. Uh, so uh, MediaTek uh, has been around and operating in South Africa for years now, uh, but our headquarters in Taiwan. And Taiwan, as you know, or maybe a lot of people know because what's happening and the shortage of the chipset globally, it's in the center of the news. So uh, we are one of the world's largest uh, suppliers of uh, chipsets for different electronic devices. I would say almost a uh, fifth of all consumer electronic devices have some MediaTek chipset in inside. Them. This chipset may be a CPU, like a processor uh, or a central processing unit, or it could be a GPU 
or a 3G modem, 4G modem, now 5G modem, USB, Bluetooth, power management chip, TV chip, Wi-Fi chip. And uh, our role has been uh, uh, now more important to the lives of people because especially after COVID, I mean, unfortunately, the people are losing a lot of their, uh, you know, normal uh, habits. So we are resorting to the, you know, the technology to keep, you know, seeing each other as we are doing now, you know. Uh, so uh, MediaTek has, uh, uh, you know, the biggest uh, business for MediaTek is the mobile phone business. So it's almost for our revenue uh, last year. And we keep uh, developing that. So we have anything in Africa from the 2G, the, you know, the legacy keypad uh, 2G phone. It's still selling in Africa and uh, 3G and 4G. And now we're uh, cooperating with our partners like uh, like Vodacom and Hanset Manufacturers to bring it to market. Mm, and mm. Uh, and uh, we have other business units also, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, bringing the products in, in Wi-Fi, as I said. So that's our second largest. And uh, what new areas like IoT and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, so we... In a nutshell, uh, we, as I said, we are in the silicon business. We design and we develop chipset for the consumer electronics. We are everywhere, not only mobility, Wi-Fi, IoT, and we're trying to be relevant for Africa. So I think that's very important. Otherwise, you would have not arranged this call with us now. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Be... <laughs> well, listen, I, I, I want to talk about Africa to both you and Davide because I mean, I've been, I've been, I've just come back from Dubai. I was at this uh, uh, JITEX conference, and you know, everyone was talking about connectivity in Africa and the big boom that's going to come. And you look at the amount of data centers. There's going to be such a demand for people to use these technologies on their devices, whether it's gaming, whether it's business, whether it's uh, IoT. I mean, there's just this massive boom heading our way. But Rami, I mean, you touched on the technologies and, and I mean, MediaTek being in Taiwan, you know, I've been following your organization with a great deal of interest. I mean, you guys spend a lot of money on R&D and you, are you able to tell us a little bit about the, the, the chipset itself and what it actually means for 5G adoption? Because MediaTek has had a massive focus on 5G adoption. But it's not only that. I mean, the perception with 5G is that, you know, the handsets are expensive and it's a, it's a big jump for users, which is not necessarily the case. So tell us about the, uh, the, the R&D and the actual chipset and what you're doing to lower the costs. Mm. So the chipset is a set of chips. The, the central chip is the processing unit. You could say that, for example, the second one is the GPU and you have other peripheral chipset, but in a mobile phone, the most important is the modem. Uh, and this is the chip that connects the phone to the cellular towers that Davide's team would be deploying around the country in South Africa, in Kenya, Ethiopia, etc. Uh, so this modem is changing with every generation. Mm. Okay, so the CPUs are getting faster, GPUs more powerful, uh, Bluetooth going to version 5, 5.2. But the most complicated change in this decade would be uh, the move of the modem from 3G, 4G to 5G. Because 5G is such a, it's such a revolution. Actually, LTE is long-term evolution because it was evolution on 3G, but 5G is totally different different and the complexity of the modem and what we call the the front end the radio signaling between the phone and the tower is as you just said now is mind blowing and you have to keep the battery alive can you imagine so it's so difficult to keep in the same price segment without heating problem um, and with conserving the battery life we're focusing a lot on, on that. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, if you compare to what we did in 4G, we may be doing better. So quickly, almost from the outset, you're going to see, uh, uh, you know, relatively affordable devices in 5G. And that's our main focus for Africa. Fantastic. Uh, Davide, it's a very interesting collaboration that you, you know, yourselves at Vodacom have with MediaTek. And I guess it's 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 in everyone's interest, right, to grow 
the 5G technology. I mean, that is the future. Ultimately, this is where we are going to be. Um, tell us about this collaboration between Vodacom South Africa and MediaTek. Yeah, we are uh, uh, working very strictly on several products, uh, really to drive down uh, the cost uh, of uh, 5G devices uh, and make them more affordable. Um, 5G devices, uh, you are right, uh, they are still perceived uh, uh, elite technology, but, uh, uh, but we see positive trends in terms of price erosion, which is happening faster than in the past for 4G devices. Uh, the rollout of 5G in countries like China, United States, uh, South Korea, many uh, European countries is also helping uh, to achieve uh, the right economy of scale to drive uh, 5G uh, prices down. And therefore, uh, also thanks uh, to MediaTek uh, chipset, uh, we are seeing uh, the introduction of cost-effective 5G enabled smartphones uh, uh, in the mid-tier segment already, and not only in the top uh, iconic uh, um, tier price points. To, to share some numbers, uh, we currently purchase 5G devices uh, in the 200 US dollar cost range. Then uh, you have to add, uh, obviously, import duties, logistic, VAT, margins, exchange rate, uh, which is not going uh, towards the right direction you know mm -hmm. so 5g devices are sold in south africa in the 4500 to 5000 price range uh, predicting uh, the prices uh, in this economic and market context uh, is very difficult uh, because the exchange rate is extremely volatile and uh, you know the cov 19 pandemic effects are boosting component prices and logistic cost Nevertheless, uh, let's uh, be optimistic. Uh, um, we already see the MediaTek chipset uh, uh, really helping some manufacturers uh, to produce uh, and distribute uh, uh, affordable 5G devices. And uh, we always uh, monitor uh, all the efforts uh, from manufacturers uh, to, reduce, uh, to reduce the price. So we hope that 5G devices uh, could reach uh, 3,500 price point in one year time which means uh, circa 20% uh, price erosion, uh, which will be a very, very uh, good, uh, important result to drive uh, 5G adoption in South Africa. Wow, that's very interesting. I mean, does, do those numbers concur with you uh, as well, Rami? I mean, when you're looking at those price points and the drop in price points, and I guess, I guess it's all correlates, right, with the demand that consumers have. I mean, you just have to look at um, how much more video people are watching, how many more data centers are going up. So there's a massive demand for high speed connectivity where people want to consume content on their mobile devices. They want to integrate 5G into their uh, homes, into their businesses. And I guess that price point that Davide was talking about is, is quite mouth-watering mouth -watering when you talk about the price coming down so much. Is that, uh, is that a fair assumption? Um, I think what Davide is saying is realistic. It's now. Uh, I don't know how they're able to do this. I think there's a lot of sacrifice because the cost of shipping has skyrocketed and the cost yes. of components has increased last year, uh, despite whatever uh, you know optimization we are trying to do. Uh, uh, optimization in the roadmap, for example. So we're trying to streamline the roadmap so that we you know kind of uh, uh, focus on uh, on uh, less number of chipset for example less number of projects with the partners so that we both benefit we and the manufacturer we end up with a more uh, better design in terms of cost uh, but still things are outside our control certain things and yeah. uh, and that means certain sacrifices from everybody i think uh, people like davide are uh, every day looking at that how can they keep the customer away from the shock the supply shock is a, was a huge. Now, looking forward, uh, <clears throat> there's the optimistic and the pessimistic view. Uh, the pessimistic view is that there's the, there will be continuation of the supply uh, and logistic problems going forward. Uh, I think some people would like to do that if they're uh, maybe uh, manipulating. You know, I don't know. Uh, they have their own. Uh, Means, but practically, we are working in media tech on a daily basis, actually, to uh, kind of get out of the 2020 uh, <laughs> era. You know, so it's like a movie or a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> listen, trying to finish. 
Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's been incredibly challenging. I mean, you just look at, uh, I mean, I listened to both of you just talking about logistics. I mean, every single industry has been affected. And you look at the, the chip shortages globally and how it's like affecting the smallest devices. But I mean, the reality, gents, is that, I mean, people are seeing the light at the end of the tunnel by, say, 2023. Once that happens and the supply of chipsets has improved, which it should improve by then. And of course, the cost of logistics, because it's, boy, oh boy, it's like sky high for anybody at the moment. But I guess that will resolve itself. But once we have all those costs coming down, uh, there could be massive growth of 5G uh, in South Africa, Davide. I mean, I see you nodding your head there, but ultimately, once we get to that price point, 5G could drive inclusive growth in South Africa and across Sub-Saharan Africa. It has the potential to change people's lives. Yeah, I fully, uh, I fully, I fully agree, Aki. Uh, but uh, it has to be a value chain uh, industry play. Uh, the 5G revolution in Africa is happening. It's true, and uh, as I said, Vodacom has more than half a million customers already using 5G services and uh, and the smartphones. Uh, the trend is there, but it needs the effort and support from all the actors and players involved in the industry value chain to accelerate uh, and, as you said, really change uh, people's lives. We need manufacturers like MediaTek to bring 5G technology costs down, uh, leveraging on new and innovative solutions. Uh, we need the help of logistics suppliers, uh, because now logistics is a bottleneck. Uh, Vodacom, as an operator, will invest, uh, and we have ambitious uh, uh, network coverage plan. Uh, we also need, uh, as an industry, uh, more frequencies uh, released to deploy efficient mm -hmm. and top-performing 5G network. Uh, to expedite South Africa economic recovery post-pandemic and to ensure that uh, uh, South Africa is not left behind uh, in the fourth industrial revolution, spectrum allocation needs uh, to be urgently addressed. Uh, we know there should be a tender in March. Uh, let's, uh, let's really hope uh, it, it will happen uh, to assign new frequencies uh, and to allow us uh, to really provide the best 5G solution and service uh, for our customers. No, absolutely. And, and I'm sure, Rami, that you must be seeing this uh, same growth in other regions. I mean, South Africa falls under your portfolio, but you've got uh, Middle East, you've got Africa. I mean, uh, uh, Dubai, for example, and uh, in Egypt, I've seen exceptional growth of 5G technology. I mean, the, the, the revolution of 5G is happening already in these countries. Mm -hmm. I would say Gulf countries are naturally... Uh... Uh, higher ASP, average selling price, so 5G penetration is uh, is almost everywhere uh, above the $200 segment, as the video is saying. So there's you cannot buy any 4G device no more than $200. They're squeezed under that, that segment. Mm -hmm. There are still people who will uh, try to go for them. Um, uh, and uh, um, uh, But uh, just I want to touch again on the point you're saying uh, of 2023. Um, so uh, why 2023? Uh, because uh, silicon, I mean, people may not understand the complexity of the manufacturing. Uh, I mean, uh, the, it's, it costs more than $10 billion, uh, you know, to set up a facility and it might take three years to build it. And only, yes. you know, like uh, two or three countries in the world have the technology to do that. So the problem happened 2020. So we're looking at 2023 because you need three years to set up the capacity, but also we can do reallocation. So MediaTek, MediaTek is, you know, trying to really uh, allocating all its, uh, you know, or most, I mean, a lot of its resources towards 5G to help alleviate the, the, the issues there. Uh, but what's happening, Aki, is that the use cases are developing as we are working to tackle them. Mm. So, you mm. know, so the timelines, you know, maybe, um, you know, uh, uh, shifted. So um, because the demand for other categories, not, uh, you know, other categories in uh, semiconductors are growing. And even our forecasts for 5G are not necessarily uh, accurate. Uh, so you talked about Africa, three or 6%, three in Sub-Saharan and maybe six in South Africa, but we're already seeing David that the demand is higher. And, uh, and because there's a lot of dynamics around the spectrum. Uh, you know, there's ambiguity. Yes. So how can we forecast when there's this big, you know, ambiguous uh, 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 issue? Yeah. 
uh, we 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 are trying our best, but we also would like the you know the regulators and the governments to also think about this point uh, from their side. Uh, it needs calculation. Uh, the population, the industries need to be supported better. In in Gulf countries, for example, the seven Gulf states here in the Middle East, they've already have set up a steering committee for 5G. I think I've been attending three years back, which have leaders yes. from the industry and vertical and spectrum, I think like three verticals, and they're discussing and aligning. And, and without this, uh, the planning would be poor. So I think that's maybe one of my key calls to whoever from the influencers or decision makers in South Africa, if they're hearing this, is that they have to get on and to sit with us and to sit with Davide and do the planning. Mm -hmm. uh, because otherwise, uh, you know, uh, there would be a huge delay in terms of the adoption in Africa and that would hurt the economy. No, absolutely. There's no doubt. There's no doubt that the, uh, that the spectrum issue needs to be... Now, I, you know, I know that uh, the spectrum issue in South Africa and you and I have had many conversations around this. It's been going on for a long time. You know, you may mention the spectrum and people start sweating and they get very tense about it. But I, I don't know about you, Davide, but I'm quite confident uh, that there is something that's going to change. Um, because if what you say doesn't happen in March, then I'm afraid it's going to set us back. But I really have um, a, a good feeling that they will resolve this issue and that spectrum will be allocated and um you know it's a critical part of 5g right do you feel the same optimism i do yeah well uh, let's let's cross fingers uh, touch wood uh, and be optimistic i'm uh, in general i'm also optimistic about uh, africa and digital inclusion uh, because uh, um, because of a lot of reason why in particular uh, recently also the united nation has been created uh, a uh, work stream to uh, address uh, uh, terminals affordability. It's a first uh, multi-stakeholder initiative uh, to address uh, the global mobile internet access gap launched by Vodafone Group uh, and the International Tele Telecommunication Union under mm -hmm. the uh, umbrella of the United Nations Broadband Commission. In this context, uh, we want really to develop affordable solutions uh, uh, to give uh, uh, 4G and 5G devices uh, in, in the hands of uh, African population and really drive uh, the 4G and 5G adoption. Now, Rami, your, your MediaTek Dimensity range, I've been reading a lot about it. It's got incredible traction globally. Um, and, and there's various products there. There's the, the 1200, for example. There's a gaming one as well. Um, and it's just incredible the kind of um, growth that you've seen with this particular product and, and what the dimensi Dimensity range is doing for MediaTek. It's a, it's a very young uh, and uh, the growth in a couple of years was uh, stunning. I think the first announcement was like end of 2019, maybe not great timing, <laughs> but, uh, but since then uh, uh, the adoption has been really satisfying for us and challenging us to expedite the R&D on it. We were known for the Helio range, which is our 4G. And uh, specifically, we did good in gaming in 2018-19 in the mid-range, uh, when we understood that the gamers are mostly, you know, people who cannot afford flagship. So that, you know, epiphany uh, of a moment helped us uh, focus or create that uh, product. So it's a very important not just to follow the technology, Aki. You just need, you need to understand the segment as well. Because if you keep pushing, you may not be relevant. So that's what I was talking earlier. So Dimensity, mm. again, I mean, it's 5G, so no brainer, it should be flagship. Not necessarily, because we have now, uh, you know, 4 billion mobile phones sell, sold globally every year, 4 billion. The last time I checked the number, the feature phones were shrinking, you know, 400 million, maybe 300 million. So that means more than one and a half billion easily are smartphones. So uh, can all of them be over $700? No. So this, the Dimensity series is quite big. You start from Dimensity 700, which you can get what uh, David is looking for, trying to go below $200. <laughs> and... Uh, Samsung, Oppo, Xiaomi, and uh, 
Techno and Phoenix and other partners. Uh, and then you have the one that we just recently announced and being compared now with the world's top uh, flagship for smartphones, and it's the Diamond City 9000. And yes. it's the world's first chipset using the four nanometer and a lot of first in that chipset. Uh, so uh, uh, you, where you can go to the real flagship uh, territory. Now, this is exciting stuff. And, and you just look at how people are consuming media, how they're experiencing and consuming these things on their devices. And, and aside from that, the, the content creators, you know, the, the, the software that you're using and the apps that you're using on your phones are quite demanding. You know, you need to have, uh, you need to have the power to be able to deliver and experience what you want to experience on your phone. Uh, and you look at the size of the cameras, for example, how they are improving dramatically. And ultimately, you've got to have the hardware to be able to use all of these technologies. And, uh, you know, the content creators that are editing on their devices is, is, is uh, it's amazing. It's amazing watching how what people are creating and what they're uploading and how they're consuming all these media. Certainly 5G is going to be exciting. Undoubtedly, uh, we have to unlock this value for consumers, for businesses. Uh, Davide, in closing, and I'm going to ask you the same question, Rami, what, what is the most exciting uh, part of 5G for you? What excites you the most about 5G? Well, uh, um, I think that, uh, um, in my view, uh, due to its very, very fast speed, 5G is playing uh, a pivotal, uh, a, a key role in all the use cases uh, boosted by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. You know, remote working, remote education, remote healthcare, remote entertainment services will be massively improved and delivered, leveraging on 5G technologies and, and capabilities. And uh, um, in particular, 5G could really help uh, to bring uh, high speed connectivity in the rural areas where fiber is not present, contributing to reduce the digital divide and increase uh, digital inclusion. And, and last but not least, uh, if we think about uh, healthcare services uh, and uh, in particular telemedicine, 5G could really uh, change the scenario, change the scene uh, and uh, allow uh, um, important uh, and, uh, and uh, strong uh, healthcare services also in rural areas uh, and uh, for uh, um, disadvantages uh, communities. So Rami, from is, your uh, point... Yeah. Pardon, this is what pardon. really excite. No, this is what really excite me a lot about 5G. Uh, the, the the contribution of 5G to increase uh, uh, digital inclusion. You know things like healthcare, Davide. Is I mean I've seen uh, you know case scenarios of you know remote healthcare. Um, it, it's incredible the, what 5G. It it is game changing. It will change people's lives. Rami, you must be seeing some interesting things. What excites you the most about 5G? Um, David, it didn't leave much for me. <laughs> it covered pretty well, but uh, being technology person, uh, something that people may not understand when moving between 4G to 5G. 5G in the US is being called cable cutter sometimes. So, uh, you know, like what you get from the mobile connectivity in 3G and 4G was limited by caps. And that's because of the capacity. Instead of uh, 5 gigahertz in 3G or 5 megahertz in 3G or 20, uh, 20 megahertz, you know, usually the width of the band of, frequ band of frequency that you get in 4G, um, you know, 5G starts at 100. Uh, so, and that means that the promise of, uh, you know, virtually unlimited monthly usage may be attained. And that means that your relationship with your mobile phone and your mobile router or fixed router at home may be much more better. So that, you know, like the worry about the data consumption may be getting, uh, you know, uh, uh, less. And the operator yes. would be able to maybe preserve the old pricing, but give you more data. That's because of the spectrum, the nature of the higher spectrum and more, more bandwidth. In mobile, in mobile, that's definitely, you know, uh, um, understood by everybody who control their package, uh, package uh, monthly package. In fixed broadband, that's even may, maybe more important because fixed broadband impacts economy and education. And the mobile router is a finite resource, you know? 
uh, because it has a monthly package that is expensive and very precious. And, 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 and optical networks are not everywhere. Uh, especially in some countries, you know, like in the region I yes. cover, Middle East and Africa, and certainly a broadband uh, uh, via optical is, is an issue. So how can we get uh, uh, the fixed uh, broadband access to be really reliable alternative to copper, fast copper, and definitely ultra fast, uh, you know, uh, 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 fiber. So 5G may fulfill that promise and we are working with Vodacom now on you know looking for uh, you know some home indoor outdoor routers and even some business routers as well so i'm interested in the value for the economy second point is the iot again what i'm trying to say is the two points that maybe the consumer doesn't know about iot is still using 2g to a great extent you know and that is disaster for the operators because they want to slowly, gradually, you know, kind of uh, uh, remove that from the network because the operating expenses are high and for other reasons as well. Leverage the spectrum for other things. Uh, but uh, 3G and 4G did not yet offer the magical solution that will replace the good old uh, uh, GSM, uh, you know, connections. Uh, and uh, Africa needs a lot of IoT. You know, in, in 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 solar, you know, some solar projects in East Africa, some agriculture projects in South Africa. I've been seeing, you know, a lot of interp- entrepreneurs winning uh, awesome ideas, prizes for awesome ideas. But we need to give them the right uh, cellular technology for IoT and 5G. Uh, now, uh, one of the standards, one of the standard, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, definitions, uh, uh, we'll talk about. Uh, uh, IoT. So uh, that means you could get like years of battery life for a, for a remote connection if you're monitoring something that does not have power connection. And uh, that means we can really then connect, uh, you know, to reach the billion of connections. So there's a talk about IoT. It was not fulfilled in 4G. We're looking to 5G to define well the new protocols for low power wide area network IoT and to industrialize it properly, which will help the people and the economies of Africa. Wow, uh, lots to look forward to. Very exciting, and I mean the, the 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 difference that connectivity makes to an economy. For example, when you open it up and the cost comes down, and people are able to uh, get onto this digital highway that we're talking about, this fourth industrial revolution that you've both been talking about. Five G certainly is going to be one of those technologies that is going to drive this incredible change. Look forward to the impact that five G will be having in the years to come, Rami. Osman, Director of Corporate Sales and Marketing at MediaTek for Middle East and Africa, Davide Tacino, Vodacom Terminals Managing, Managing Executive. Gentlemen, thank you so much for the discussion around 5G. I'm looking forward to having a, a discussion with you again in a year from now, where we will look back and we say this progress that's been made and the targets have moved significantly higher than what we expected by 2025. I have a feeling that might happen. Thank you for your time, gents. Thank you you very much. Thank you very much.